Hi everyone, welcome to online piano learning. If you're new here, my name is Sarah. I'm a pianist and piano teacher and my channel is all about learning piano as well as all the musicianship skills that you'll need to learn if you're learning piano. So if you're interested in learning, feel free to subscribe so you don't miss any important lessons that I post. Today is going to be the second part of my compound time signatures video where we are going to practice counting and clapping rhythms in 6-8 time, 6-4 time, 9-8 time, and 12-8 time just to show you how you should be counting these rhythms. And I will also be including some rhythms in piano music and playing them for you and showing you how to count those rhythms. If you missed the last video where I talked about what compound time signatures are and the basic information you're going to need to know about compound time signatures, then feel free to click up here and watch the previous video before you complete this video. So let's get started. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first rhythm that we're going to look at today. And this rhythm is in Mozart Sonata in A major. The most famous part of the sonata is the Alla Turca third movement, which we won't be talking about today because it is in 3-4, but we will be talking about the first movement, which is some variations in 6-8 time. There are a few variations in 3-4, but we will be taking a look at the first few. All right, so this is what the beginning of the sonata looks like. And as you can see, there's some dotted notes, there's some 16th notes, and so because there are 16th notes, we are going to subdivide. Remember, our beat is now 8th notes, and when we have 8th notes, we're going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and when there's 16th notes, we're going to count 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 and. Let's try tapping them together. So your right hand is going to tap on your right thigh, your left hand is going to tap on your left thigh, and let's go. One and two and three and four and five and six and one and two and three and four and five and six and one and two and three and four and five and six and one and two and three and four and five and six and one and two three and four and five and six and one and two and three and four and five and six and now let's play and count together. One and two and three and four and five and six and one and two and three and four and five and six and one and two and three and four and five and six and one and two and three and four and five and six and one and two and three and four and five and six and one and two and three and four and five and six and one and two and three and Now that we've taken a look at the main theme together, let's quickly take a glance at variation number one, where we have a lot more 16th notes and the hands are alternating. Because there are so many 16th notes, we're definitely going to subdivide in this variation. One and two and three and four and five and six and one and two and three and four and five and six and one and two and three and four and five and six and one and two and three and four and five and six and one and two and three and four and five and six and one and two and three and four and five and six and one and two and three and four and five and six and one and two and three and four and five and six and one and two and three and four and five Alright, so that was a lot of 16th notes. The good thing is that most of this section is continuous 16th notes if you count the 16th notes in the right hand and the 16th notes in your left hand. So it should be pretty easy to tell if you are keeping a steady tempo because they're just ongoing. Let's do one more example in 6-8 time. There's something weird about the rhythm that I'm going to insert right here. 
So let me know if you've noticed anything unusual compared to the other rhythms we've done so far. In the second bar, this particular rhythm sounds like this. One and two and three and. This rhythm is using syncopation. This is an unusual rhythm because our eighth notes, which are on each beat, so one, two, three, four, five, six, typically, are now on the off beats. So one and two and three and. When you have a longer note on the off beat that carries over the next beat, that is called a syncopation. It's really common, especially in jazz music, although it happens quite a lot in popular music too. Just watch out for that, especially if you're playing popular music. It can be easy to just sing along with a song and not notice that it's a syncopation. And once you see it on the page, you're like, wait a second. It might be harder to count when it's on the page. However, it is, of course, always worth it to count it out just to make sure that you're always playing the accurate rhythm. And that way you can also line it up with your other hand. All right, so let's give this rhythm a try. Again, because there's 16 notes, we are going to count one and two and three and four and five and six and one and two and three and four and five and six and one and two and three and four and five and six. That is a little bit of syncopation just in case you haven't seen it and we will do simple time syncopation rhythms soon as well. Let's try it one more time. One and two and three and four and five and six and one and two and three and four and five and six and Not too hard, right? Okay, let's take a look at nine eight. This probably will be super easy for you because there's no difference to the type of rhythm except that we have nine beats in a bar, nine eighth notes. Instead of two groups of eighth notes, we would have three groups of eighth notes and remember, our bigger beats are the dotted quarter notes. So this rhythm actually feels more like 3-4 because it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3. All right, so that's the difference here. Then let's take a look at this rhythm. Here we have quite a lot of 16th notes, so remember to subdivide. And let's get started. One and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight and nine and one and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight and nine. And one and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight and nine. Nine eight is the same type of counting as six eight. We just have a longer bar. Now let's take a look at twelve eight time. 12-8 time is almost like we take a 6-8 bar and we just double the length of it. So again, it feels more like 4-4 four, four because it's 1, 2, 3, 2, 2, 3, 3, 2, 3, 4, 2, 3. 12 eight time is again with eighth note beats. We have four dotted quarter notes in each bar as the bigger overall beats. So it really feels like it's in four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Because this bar is so long, let's just do one bar of twelve eight time. Here we have some sixteen notes, so let's count with our ands. One and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight and nine and ten, eleven and twelve and one and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight and nine and ten and eleven and twelve and. Sometimes it's hard saying those last few numbers because eleven is really tough to say in the rhythm of one sixteenth note, but we made it. The final rhythm of the day is going to be in six four time. Remember in six four time, because we have four on the bottom, we are counting quarter notes and the larger beats in 6-4 time are going to be dotted half notes. Remember that in this bar, we are counting quarter notes for each number, each larger number, one, two, three, four, five, six, and everything else is going to be in between on the ands. One and two and three and four and five and six and. One and two and three and four and five and six 
and one and two and three and four and five and six and and that's the last rhythm for today before I end the video, I'm going to quickly clap you a rhythm in 6-8 time, and I want you to write down the rhythm in the comments if you can figure it out. Alright, so here is the rhythm. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The rhythm is just one bar, so feel free to go back and listen again if you need a few tries and write it down if you can figure it out. That is it for today's rhythm video. Next week I'll be back with some piano technique concepts that I think are really important for you to know whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or advanced player. It will help everybody. So make sure you stay tuned, hit the bell notification button if you want to be the first to be notified about my video. And hopefully now you are feeling more comfortable with rhythms in compound time. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.